I want to end with something now which is so dominant now in the press that it's worth taking very seriously. There are many, many people, some maybe even here in the audience today, who believe there is no moral view without religion. Is, is there morality without religion? Well, we can begin to already ask that question by using the data that I've already shown you. Do people with different religious backgrounds, or in this case, people with religious backgrounds versus those without, make different judgments? So here's another case. I'm going to give you two more cases and I'm going to show you some data. For those of you who think that both the bystander case and the heavy man on the bridge case are permissible, meaning that you're completely utilitarian, if you can save five over one, you always go for it. That's a fine way to think about it. Here's another case to sort of tempt you a little bit. You're a doctor, and an incoming ambulance has just brought in five patients, desperately each in need of an organ, but there's no time to send out for organs. However, this healthy person just walked in off the street. <laughs> And you have the following choice. You could allow the fire to die, or you could just take this guy, take his organs, and save the five. So if you're a utilitarian, you better stick with allowing the five to die. Sorry, of killing the one. All right, case number two. Here you are walking home one night, and all of a sudden, you see a drowning baby. Your action could rescue that baby, save its life, but it would ruin your pants. Or you can just walk on home, allowing the baby to die, and your pants are in good shape for the party tonight. So what we did was we asked people those questions, and we want to compare religious versus non-religious. For the bystander case, as well as for the heavy man case, absolutely no difference in the ratings of permissibility for these cases. Religious people with any kind of background show the same kind of judgment as those without. Similarly, for the organ donor case, only about 3% say that it's permissible to basically wipe out Mr. Healthy Guy, but so do non-religious people. And similarly, when you compare the drowning baby case, religious and non-religious people say exactly the same thing. More to the point, when you ask for justifications, there are no differences either. You do find some people relying on divine intervention or appealing to God, but you find that even in the non-religious cases. Something fate. They don't necessarily use the word God or divine intervention, but you find something like a fate kind of attribution. Even though it doesn't explain the cases, the appeal to justifications is similar across these two different kinds of background. So is there morality without religion? Yes, in the sense that there are these judgments that are happening that are happening independently of religious background. What I want to argue, therefore, and kind of leave you with, is there are a universal set of operative principles, principles that are not consciously accessible. You don't know they're operating, but they are operating. In the same way that you don't know that the principles of your language are operating, they nonetheless give you the capacity to speak fluently without reflection. However, where culture can come in, including religious factors, is in what we actually do. The judgments come online spontaneously and consciously. Culture can tweak what we do as opposed to how we judge. So to conclude, we have a situation now where for the first time, I think, we can begin to impact upon age-old debates in moral philosophy about the nature and source of our moral judgments. We now know, I think, to at least some approximation, that some aspects of our moral psychology are driven by a universal moral grammar, and reasoning and emotion follow from those.